Hi, Carl Winkler here at Electrosonics. In this video, I'll give you an overview of the DCHT Stereo Digital Transmitter. The DCHT was designed with two different applications in mind as a camera hop transmitter and as a portable transmitter for the Duet IEM IFB system. The DCHT can accept a wide variety of input sources, including analog line level, lavalier microphones, and AES digital. The unit can transmit an encrypted signal for future applications. Two-way infrared sync means you can set up your associated receivers quickly and easily. And finally, the DCHT tunes from 470 to 608 MHz, or 470 to 614 for the export version, giving you 6,000 frequencies and covering both bands A1 and B1. As you can see, there's a lot going on inside this unit. Let's take a closer look. Similar to the LT, the DCHT is slightly longer has the same backlit display and the same keypad. The DCHT is powered by two AA batteries, but can also use the LT battery eliminator for external DC power. Of course, it has an auto on mode for use with centrally switched power sources like in a bag system. The DCHT comes standard with the same wire belt clip as the LT, but can also use the optional BCSL EBN clamp style belt clip for when you need to attach it quickly to something or someone. Here on the side is the USB jack, allowing for firmware updates in the field. On top of the unit, you can see the standard SMA type antenna connector, and also the programmable switch. The switch can be set up to turn the unit on and off, or as an audio mute with the RF carrier still on. Then there are the channel input activity LEDs, green to red with analog sources, and blue when digital inputs are selected. The two-way infrared sync window allows for quick setup with the M2R receiver or any future products. The TA6 connector was chosen for two reasons. First, we wanted to keep this unit small. And second, so the inputs can properly handle analog mic and line level signals and AES digital inputs. The mic inputs are servo bias type, like all our transmitters introduced in the last 15 years. All the different adapter cables for these various sources are available now, including a pigtail version in case you need to wire something custom. Okay, so now let's get a detailed look at the screen and menus. The home screen should look familiar to anyone who has used an LT or SM wideband transmitter, although there are some differences. We see the transmitter's name, this can be changed in the menu, the battery status, whether or not it's transmitting, the operating frequency, and the audio input level. After pressing the menu select button, now we can see the different menu choices. And again, these are mostly familiar if you've used some of our recent transmitters. First is input gain, then manual frequency setting. Next is something different, however, the M2R menus. Pressing this gets us into some of the items related to the M2R receiver. These are derived from similar functions in the M2T half rack duet transmitter. Here we can get the frequency from an M2R, send a frequency to an M2R, get all settings or send all settings via the infrared sync. We can also name the transmitter and use the flex list. In short, FlexList allows you to easily set up a list of profiles in the receiver so that the user can listen to any of the mixes on site by selecting them by name. For more information on FlexList, check out my video covering the details of the M2R receiver. If we back out of the M2R menu, next on the list we see the programmable switch settings. This allows us to determine how the top switch behaves. It can be bypassed, set to mute the audio with the RF carrier still on, or to power the unit on and off. Next on the list is the high pass filter settings, common to all our portable transmitters. Stereo mode lets us choose whether or not the two channels are linked or independent. If using this unit to send two separate mono IFB feeds, we might want them to be separated, but for most stereo feeds, we probably want the channels to be linked. Input type is where we choose between analog or AES digital inputs as the source. Next is input configuration for each channel, where we can select between line, dynamic mic, or lav mic input types. If choosing lav mic, the DCHT offers a wide range of known lav mics, this is all about optimizing bias voltage, load impedance, and audio polarity. If your mic isn't on the list but you know what it requires, you can choose custom 
and set these values yourself. Next in the menu is the battery type, so that the unit transmits the correct values for battery monitoring at the receiver. The DCHT also offers a battery timer with reset function. If using rechargeable batteries, this is probably the best choice. Next is remote, which allows us to enable or disable the remote dweedle tone function. The DCHT has its own app from New Indian with a specific set of tones so that changing settings on the talent mics does not affect the transmitter even when the audio is routed through. Transmitter power can be selected at 10, 25, or 50 milliwatts. When compared to an analog transmitter, these correspond to about 25, 60, or 125 milliwatts respectively in terms of system range. As always, range is dependent on a lot of factors. Like our other transmitters, you can lock the DCHT so the front panel can't be used to make changes. Finally, you can reset defaults if you want to zero out the transmitter after a busy day on the job, especially if you've made a lot of changes to the settings and plan to use it differently next time. Like the LT and some of our other transmitters, the DCHT also has a power button menu. Here you can turn the power off, turn on or off transmission, select auto on if you are using a central power source, change the LCD backlight timeout, or turn on or off the external LEDs. The About page gives you the unit's firmware version. Over time, as updates come along, it's a good idea to check your unit for the latest version. As you can see, there's a lot going on inside this transmitter, but let me show you how easy it is to get it set up and running with the M2R digital receiver. Usually, you want your receiver to choose a clean frequency by scanning or using SmartTune. We'll use SmartTune on the M2R as it only takes about 30 seconds to scan from 470 to 608 MHz before choosing the cleanest frequency. Once that's done, we'll go to the M2R menu in the DCHT to sync up the transmitter. After selecting Get Freak, we see Sync and an arrow pointing to the Up button. Hold the units close with the IR windows facing each other and press the button. You'll see the handshake on both units and just like that they're synced. Now we go to the power button menu to turn on the RF transmission on the DCHT. If we back out to the home screen, we see the antenna transmitting icon. On the M2R, we see the blue link LED on top and also the RF level on the receiver's LCD. Let's play some audio into the DCHT and we'll see the audio meters moving on the M2R. From there, we can use the M2R as an IFB receiver or as a camera hop receiver. For camera hop use with the M2R receiver, you'll need a cable like this one with a 1 8 inch stereo plug on one end and two XLRs on the other. This kind of cable is readily available from a variety of sources. In fact, most electrosonics dealers will probably have something like this in stock. For mounting the M2R receiver on portable cameras, one option is to use the LR shoe assembly, which just snaps right into the belt clip. As you can see, the DCHT is a flexible, powerful tool for a variety of applications and it's packed with features to use it as a camera hop transmitter and an IFB IEM portable transmitter. For more details on this product or anything from Electrosonics, please visit electrosonics.com. Thanks for watching.